Uh, welcome to Hearts United, First Friday, First Saturday, USA. This year, the 50th anniversary of our Diocese of Charlotte, Divine Providence has arranged for our Eucharistic Congress to fall on August 5th and 6th, the first Friday and first Saturday of the month. Thank you, Bishop Jugis, Father Onsberger, and all our diocesan vicars, pastors, and priests for uniting us as a diocese today, and especially for your daily sacrifice of the Mass, 365 days a year, to bring us the source and summit of all devotions, the Eucharist. Thank you, Abbot Placid, Dr. Thierfelder, Rosary leaders, Mr. Thomas Savoy and Luke William for enriching our presentation today entitled Hearts United, First Friday, First Saturday, USA. It is most fitting to recognize the First Friday devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the First Saturday devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary at the Eucharistic Congress because both devotions are, set, are centered on the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and communions of reparation. What is reparation? Reparation essentially means repairing a broken heart. Reparation means consoling the broken hearts of Jesus and Mary for all the times their love has been ignored, rejected, or despised by ourselves and others so that God will manifest his mercy towards us rather than his justice. Reparation is necessary, especially when God's commandments are ignored or despised, or when the love of God present in the sacraments is ignored, rejected, despised, or desecrated. It is a great act of mercy to continually make acts of reparation for others who have committed grave offenses against the sovereignty of God. How specifically do Jesus and Mary want us to console their hearts with reparation? In 1673, Jesus revealed to St. Margaret Mary in Pere le Maniel, France, that devotion to his sacred heart is essentially a truly grateful love. He asked for a holy hour of adoration in front of the Blessed Sacrament every Thursday evening from 11 p.m. to midnight in honor of his abandonment to his Father's will in the agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus also asked for a communion of reparation on nine consecutive First Fridays of the month in order for us to receive the love that he, share, that he thirsts to share with us and to thank him for his suffering, his sacrifice, his friendship, and his intimacy. Jesus also asked that an annual solemn feast of the Sacred Heart be established in the Universal Church. In 1917, Our Lady appeared to three ch uh, shepherd children, Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta, in, Fa in Fatima, Portugal, saying that Jesus wishes to make use of you to make me known and loved. He wants to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. He asked us to take to heart five little prayers to recall throughout the day while going about our ordinary daily work, including O oh Jesus, this is for love of you, for the conversion of sinners, for the Holy Father, and in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And another little prayer, O oh Most Holy Trinity, I adore you. My God, my God, I love you in the most blessed sacrament. She asked us to accept the sufferings that God sends us for the conversion of sinners and to pray the rosary every day in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary in order to obtain peace for the world and the end of the war, because only she can help you. She also asked for the consecration of Russia and the world to her Immaculate Heart, and she asked for the First Saturday devotion to be practiced each month and spread throughout the world. The First Saturday devotion was requested by Our Lady as a model to make reparation to her Immaculate Heart and for the sanctification of the Catholic Church. She gave us a vision of hell and a vision of a future pope, bishops, priests, consecrated religious and faithful martyred for the faith, whose blood was gathered up in crystal aspersoriums by two angels to be sprinkled on souls making their way to God. Our Lady's sixth and final apparition in Fatima on October 13, 1917, included apparitions of Saint Joseph with the child Jesus, Our Lady of Sorrows, Our Lady of Mount Carmel with the scapular, 
concluding with the spectacular miracle of the sun witnessed by 70,000 people. Preceding Our Lady's apparitions in 1916 were three apparitions from the Angel of Peace who catechized the three children through prayer and the sacraments. He first taught them about the three theological virtues and the virtue of religion with this prayer. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. He then proceeded to teach them about the Trinity, the Incarnation, the importance of prayer, sacrifice, and penance, reverence for the Eucharist as the source and summit of all devotion, and that the hearts of Jesus and Mary are inseparable. The angel taught the children to prostrate themselves in the presence of the sacred host and chalice, which was suspended in the air while reciting this prayer three times. Most Holy Trinity, I adore you profoundly. I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles throughout the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifference by which, we, which he is offended. And through the infinite merits of his most sacred heart and the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg the conversion of poor sinners. Then rising from the ground, he offered the children Holy Communion while saying, take and drink the body and blood of Jesus Christ, horribly outraged by ungrateful men. Repair their crimes and console your God. Once again, the angel prostrated himself on the ground and re repeated three more times the same prayer and then disappeared. Altogether, the three Fatima children received three visits from the Angel of Peace in 1916, followed by six visits from Our Lady of Fatima in 1917. Lucia learned to read as requested by Our Lady and became a consecrated religious. Her cousins, Francisco and Jacinta, always faithful to Our Lady's prayer requests, died as children and were canonized by Pope Francis on May 13, 2017, the hundredth anniversary of Our Lady's first apparition in Fatima. They are the youngest non-martyr saints in the history of the Catholic Church. After the 1917 Fatima apparitions, her cousins now in heaven, Sister Lucia herself received three follow-up visits from Jesus and Mary in 1925, 1926, and 1929. On December 10th, 1925, in Ponte Vedra, Spain, the Most Holy Virgin Mary appeared to Sister Lucia with the child Jesus. The child Jesus said to Lucia, have pity on the heart of your Most Holy Mother. It is covered with thorns with which ungrateful men pierce it at every moment, and there is no one to remove them with an act of reparation. Our Lady then said to Lucia, my daughter, look at my heart, surrounded with thorns, with which ungrateful men pierce it at every moment by their blasphemies and ingratitude. You at least try to console me and say that I promise to assist at the hour of death with all the graces necessary for salvation, all those who on the first Saturday of five consecutive months go to confession and receive Holy Communion, recite five decades of the rosary, and keep me company for a quarter of an hour with the intention of making reparation to me. Between the two devotions to the Sacred Immaculate Heart, altogether there is one Thursday evening Holy Hour from 11 to midnight, nine consecutive First Friday Holy Communions of reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, one solemn feast of the Sacred Heart, five consecutive First Saturday Holy Communions of Reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, five decades of the Rosary on First Saturday, an additional 15-minute meditation in company with Our Lady on First Saturday, and the request to pray five decades of the Rosary 365 days a year. How important is it to keep count? In the Book of Kings, Naaman the leper traveled over 700 miles from Aram to Samaria 
bringing 10 silver talents, 6,000 gold pieces, 10 festal garments, and a letter of recommendation from his king to the king of Israel, which, which read, with this letter and gold, I am sending my servant Naaman to you that you may cure him of his leprosy. Expecting a personal audience with the prophet Elisha and a sophisticated cure of his leprosy, Naaman was simply instructed by a messenger of the prophet Elisha to go and wash seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be clean. But Naaman the le leper turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, if the prophet told you to do something extraordinary, would you not do it? All the more since he told you wash and be clean. So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times according to the word of the man of God. His flesh became like the flesh of a little child and he was clean. Naaman's faith was clearly more precious than his gold. While it is vital to defer to Our Lady's specific instructions for First Saturday, Jesus made a second post-Fatima follow-up visit to Lucia on February 15, 1926, allowing for flexibility in confessing and receiving Holy Communion. He discusses with Sister Lucia an allowance for the faithful to confess within eight to 20 days of the First Saturday and the option of receiving First Saturday Holy Communion of Reparation on Sunday if necessary. More importantly, during this second follow-up visit in 1926, Jesus asked Lucia directly, have you spread through the world what our Heavenly Mother requested of you? Emphasizing several times, not only practice her First Friday request, but to spread our Blessed Mother's message as well. Finally, on June 13, 1929, in Tui, Spain, Lucia experienced an astonishing vision while making her Thursday evening holy hour from 11 to midnight in reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and reciting the Fatima angel prayers. The third post-Fatima vision included Our Lady of the Rosary and her Immaculate Heart covered in thorns in her hand, God the Father watching over Christ crucified on the altar, with his precious blood pouring from his holy face and his sacred heart into the chalice and host. The Holy Spirit was depicted in the form of a dove and crystal clear water was flowing down the side forming the words grace and mercy. The Tui vision was captured by an artist preserving for the faithful brilliant insight into the means of sharing in the divine nature in order to be victorious over the powers and principalities of this world, in order to help Our Lady save souls and bring peace. In this same 1929 apparition, Our Lady said to Lucia, the moment has come when God asks the Holy Father to make in union with all the bishops of the world, the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart, promising to save it by this means. So numerous are the souls which the justice of God condemns for sins committed against me that I have come to ask for reparation. Sacrifice yourself for this intention and pray. Later in 1930, Sister Lucia wrote further on the meaning of the apparition and our Lord's requests. The good Lord promises to end the persecution in Russia if the Holy Father will himself make a solemn act of reparation and consecration of Russia to the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, as well as order all the bishops of the Catholic world to do the same. The Holy Father must then promise that upon the ending of this persecution, he will approve and recommend the practice of the reparation devotion already described. To align ourselves with this duty of the Holy Father and the bishops of the world, it is a good time for the people of God to take extreme ownership in carrying out the mission to spread First Saturday devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary throughout the world in order to save souls. The Dunkirk evacuation in World War II was carried out by, carried out by civilians who rescued more than 330,000 Allied troops by sea using more than 861 vessels, including rowboats, 
243 of the vessels being sunk during the operation. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. There is no greater joy and anticipation than rescuing others from certain death. Recently, U.S. Coast Guard out of New York, along with the Air Force pararescue jumpers, PJs, saved two Portuguese sailors from dying on their burning ship. It was, it was pitch black out at sea, and they were jumping from a very low altitude, making the mission extremely dangerous. One of the PJs about to jump but with reservations about leaving his wife widowed and son orphaned, hesitated momentarily until he turned to his fellow PJ, whose face was beaming with joy and excitement over the prospect of saving lives. We've got this, he said. He gave a fist pump and they both jumped. They plunged down into the dark sea, successfully providing life-saving me medical care to the severely burned men. We can do this too. It's about saving souls from the fires of hell, words which are our lady added to the prayers of the rosary at Fatima. It is important to meditate on hell in order to lead all souls to heaven. The Divine Comedy is a good comparison to the Fatima message. Dante finds himself in a dark wood but cannot overcome the three beasts, the powers and principalities, who are obstacles to him returning to the path of love and beauty. Heaven sends him an eloquent, wise, and compassionate guide, Virgil, who gives him confidence and instruction in passing through hell and into purgatory. A beautiful, loving guide, Beatrice, then urges him on to reach his final goal, the beatific vision and eternal happiness. Dante's Inferno is a healthy meditation on the realities of hell and eternal, f and, and eternal fire. Anthony Esselin's translation is excellent with a Catholic course audio companion available through St. Benedict's Press, which is highly recommended. In our vibrant diocese alone, our bishop, priests, pastors, seminarians, consecrated religious, individuals, families, apostolates, and organizations have been creative, successful, and joyful as co-workers with the Immaculate Heart of Mary for many months and years. A special thanks to our Bishop, the Eucharistic Congress, and others for bringing Sister Angela of Portugal, the current Vice Postulator of Sister Lucia's Cause for Sainthood, and one of the world's leading authorities on the Fatima message to our diocese many times for our inspiration. Local apostolates such as Te Deum, who are displaying Sister Lucia's favorite version of the Fatima statue today, luminaries of Mary who are with us today at the First Friday, First Saturday table, and holy heroes at table 114 whose products are distributed, are distributed throughout the United States, engaging children in the First Saturday devotion using sticker incentives, stories, and presents. They're all faithfully spreading the message as well. The Catholic Company, St. Benedict Press, Sacred Heart Parish, St. Patrick's Visual of the Two Hearts, St. Vincent's Parish, Belmont Abbey College, and many others are doing the same. Mrs. Kathleen Potter, whose funeral was recently held at St. Patrick's, was a model of extreme ownership in doing her part. St. Michael Catholic School principal and St. Michael pastor have recently aligned the nine First Fridays of the academic year to be an all-day festival devotion of the Sacred Heart with lively competitions, games, and food in order to heighten the students' knowledge and affection for the Sacred and Immaculate Heart communions of reparation. Their school uniform on First Friday are the First Friday, First Saturday t-shirts displayed in the back and available for purchase. Also available for purchase at the First Friday, First Saturday table are several items intended to inspire us to take action. Both the devotion to the Sacred Heart according to St. Gertrude book entitled Love, Peace, and Joy and the Fatima and the First Saturdays book and prayer card are highly recommended. 
We will be hosting a Zoom book study in September using the Yellow Fatima book and have been given permission by Abbot Placid to host First Saturday Devotion in the Grotto at Belmont Abbey beginning at 10.30 a.m. with the Rosary, followed by Mass and Communion of Reparation in the Church at 11, and back to the Grotto at 11.30 for the additional 15-minute meditation in company with Our Lady. Please join us if you'd like. In conclusion, through the grace of the Two Hearts Devotion, without leaving the post of our individual vocations and current daily responsibilities, in alignment with the U.S. Bishop's new Eucharistic initiative, and in communion with one another, we will be successful in bringing consolation to the Immaculate Heart of so great a mother for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. Um, and now Dr. Thierfeld will give, share us some thoughts on Reparation and gratitude, thank you. Yeah, as you can see, uh, you might have thought this was my kneeler. But uh, anyway, good afternoon, everybody. It's, it's great to be here with you. Um, there's not much I can add to what Mary, Mary, my wife, and our Blessed Mother Mary have had to say about uh, First Saturday devotions. But I thought that I would maybe spend a few minutes to sharpen your awareness and engage your will to do what is good and right. To do, whether you are aware of it or not, what will ultimately be the fulfillment of your true desire, which is holiness and union with God. So awareness first. We expose ourselves to infinite temptations and distractions every day. We tend to fill our time with things we think will entertain us and distract us from the fatigue, the hardship, the sacrifice of daily life. However, if we are honest with ourselves, we just waste a lot of time. We are not happier and more at peace. We are not filled with love, peace, and joy. And each day we awake anew hungrier than ever before for something that will truly fill us up. But we tend to tread the same old path of habitually doing the same old things that do not fill us up with the peace and joy that we so desire above all things. It is a vicious cycle that can only be broken if we decide to change it. The solution is to change, to break the habit of wasting time that is filled with meaningless activity that in the end, we know leads to nothing good. The solution is to spend more time, more of our time on the things that guarantee lasting peace, happiness, and joy, namely prayer, reconciliation, the Eucharist. The challenge is that our fallen nature recoils from that solution, which involves giving up something that we could keep for ourselves, to sacrifice physically, mentally, and or spiritually. We are certainly blessed by all the technological advantages of the age. If they are under our control, if they are not, they will kill us. I suggest a small change to begin with. If you are a person who carries your phone with you at all times, maybe a few of you, Begin by purposely leaving it in another room for 30 minutes. If that is too dramatic, how about 15 minutes? I know for some of you, you will experience separation anxiety, but you will survive. During that 15 to 30 minutes, consider reading a little bit of the Fatima First Saturday's book, which if you go back, the first row on the left there, just down by the Belmont Abbey banner and sign. The book is there, free prayer cards are there. I encourage you to get the book, have it, and for that 15 or 30 minutes, read a little bit of it. Or pray the rosary, keeping the mystery in mind with the intention of doing reparation for all the offenses and blasphemies against the sacred and immaculate hearts. Or visit a church or an adoration chapel no matter how difficult it is at times to bring yourself to adoration or confession or mass, you will never regret having done it. And I know I'm preaching to the choir, but all of us, I think sometimes 
get a little bit in going through the motions. We know we are sort of supposed to do it, we, we really want to do it, but boy, I just don't feel like doing it. Today, during Mass, think of the words of St. John Chrysostom telling us how we should react when we appear in the presence of our Eucharistic Lord. He said, when you see the blessed sacrament exposed, say to yourself, thanks to this body, I am no longer dust and ashes. I am no more a captive, but a free human being. Hence, I hope to obtain heaven and the good things that are there in store for me, eternal life, the heritage of the angels, companionship with Christ. Death has not destroyed this body which was pierced by nails and scourged. This is that body which was once covered with blood, pierced by a lance, from which issued the saving fountains upon the world, one of blood and the other of water. This body he gave to us to keep and to eat as a mark of his intense love. Think of that today. We should be overwhelmed with gratitude. It begins with humility, with the awareness of our place in reality and our relationship to God, our Creator. Once we accept this truth, we can't help but to be overwhelmed with gratitude for all the infinite blessings in our lives, including our next heartbeat or our next breath. Jesus Christ and his Blessed Mother have asked you, have asked you, this is being asked of you, to make reparation for all the blasphemies and offenses. This isn't for somebody else to go do. This is for you. The Blessed Mother is talking to you right now, to your soul. In these words, the Blessed Mother is asking you personally today to begin this devotion. I don't know how many of you read the book before or how much, how much you know about the, the, the apparitions and what was said. It's incredible. It is incredible what we have been given and what we've been asked to do and we are not doing it sufficiently. Even if you're doing it alone, it's not enough. There needs to be public witness to this. At the end of our lives, we are going to stand before God and he will not, we won't be able to say, I didn't know. The Blessed Mother is asking you here and now to love her and through her to love her son, our Lord Jesus Christ. First, begin by reading the Fatima and First Saturday book. Second, join a once a week Zoom study for 13 weeks. Easy to do, wonderful experience, great friendships. It's just, you know, one night a week for 45 minutes, basically. It's, it's incredible. And then third, speak with your pastor and help him to encourage and organize the public First Saturday's devotion at your parish. It is important, if you read and study the message of Fatima, you will see it is this public, this public First Saturday that the Blessed Mother is asking us for. She's not just asking for your individual, you know, going to a First Saturday. She wants us together doing this. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ told Sister Lucia this in his words. He said, it is true, my daughter, that many souls begin the first Saturdays, but few finish them. And those who do complete them do so in order to receive the graces that are promised thereby. It would please me more if they did five with the fervor and with the intention of making reparation to the heart of your heavenly mother, rather than 15 in a tepid or indifferent manner. Reparation is the key here. It is through our prayers, it is through this devotion that our reparation will bring peace to the world. And the world has never been in more need of peace than it is today. And we can do something about it. It may be easy to forget these words as you leave here today unless you commit now to Our Lady who is personally asking you to make the first five first Saturdays with the intention of making reparation to the heart of your Heavenly Mother. 
I pray you will, for your sake, for your family's sake, for our country, for the world, and for the church. And with that, I'm going to turn it over and we're going to pray the rosary. I hope you will join us in that. Thank you. And and with that, we're going to have the opportunity of praying the rosary together. And again, just to echo the words from Dr. Thierfelder and his wife, Mary, with the intention and mindfulness of the reparations to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For the Holy Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For faith, hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. For hope, hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. For charity, hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now shall be world without end. Amen. The first joyful mystery is the Annunciation, and we pray for humility. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of your mercy. The second joyful mystery is the visitation, and we pray for charity towards our neighbor. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of your mercy. The third joyful mystery is the Nativity, and we pray for spirit of poverty. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the, from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in the most need of them. The fourth joyful mystery is the presentation at the temple, and we pray for obedience. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need of thy mercy. The fifth joyful mystery is the finding in the temple, and we pray for zeal for the glory of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may receive the promises of Christ. Pray for us. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant we beseech you that by meditating upon these mysteries, of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, employed thy help, and sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Abbot Placid will now be closing out our session here uh, with some uh, short reflection. So please join me in welcoming Abbot Placid Solari. It's beautiful that right in the middle of this day, given over to adoration and veneration of the Blessed Sacrament, that we can put this time together to pray come into the presence of the Lord and of his blessed mother. The rosary is a beautiful prayer, and it seems to me that it's perhaps the most familiar contact most of us have with the church's tradition of contemplative prayer. When we say contemplative prayer, it can be somewhat off-putting. What's that? Is that just for special people or so? But really, we have to remember that our prayer, and we've taken the time to, to pray, this beautiful prayer of the rosary. But really prayer is not something we're doing for God so much as to come into the presence of God, to open ourselves to God so that God may do something for us. And that's what I mean about the rosary is the, the access most of us probably have to that tradition of coming into the presence of the Lord, to rest in his love, and to see what he may wish to do for us. The mysteries of the decades of the rosary, which sometimes we just take for granted, they're just there and we just know what they are, 
Of course, are drawn from scripture and some from the traditions of the church, and they center on Christ's redeeming work. They're intended, I propose, not only to strengthen our faith in that redeeming work, but especially to promote our own participation in and acceptance of that redeeming work. This is done, first of all, through the intercession of and contemplation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who is first among all the redeemed and first among the disciples of Jesus. She's also the first to share in the fullness of redemption run for us by her son and her assumption body and soul into heaven, which we are preparing to celebrate in these coming days. So often we, people ask who they struggle with the rosary, it seems like it's simply an accumulation of intercessions to the Blessed Mother and the repeated Hail Marys. The repeated intercession of the Blessed Mother is in itself a good thing. But to some extent, these appeals to her intercession are kind of a base and a foundation, as it were, to open us and focus our attention on the particular mystery and its meaning for me in my life. And so I'm going to speak today briefly on the fifth joyful mystery, which we've just prayed, the finding of the child Jesus in the temple. As we know, this event is recounted to us in the ending of the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. To speak about this chapter, I went back to an early church writer. His name was Origen. He lived in Alexandria and Palestine in the third, second and third centuries. And these homilies he left us were probably preached in the 230s. That's a long time ago, as people have continually, down through the ages of the church, a great richness passed on to us by those who've gone before us of contemplating that passage from the Gospel of Luke. And as I say, the purpose of the mysteries is not to remind us of the events of our salvation so much as to draw us into the contemplation of God's love revealed in them and the meaning of those mysteries for our salvation in our life at this moment. The richness of them, of course, is that the meaning of those mysteries for us can change depending on the circumstances, the challenges, and the graces at any given time in our life and as the seasons of our life, go, as we go through the seasons of our life. And so there are three things I would propose that we might want to think about in that mystery of the finding of the child Jesus in the temple. So I said, I'm taking my, my cue on this from, from origin. In the first place, as all the joyful mysteries are, they're focused on the fundamental mystery of the incarnation. That is the amazing reality that the Son of God took to himself fully, truly, and completely our humanity, including a created body and soul. And Origen in his contemplation or remarks on that gospel passage notes that um, in the concluding of the account of the presentation of the temple, which comes immediately before the episode of the finding in the temple, the gospel tells us that the child grew and became strong and filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. And he says that he was filled with wisdom because he, like all of us, was a unity of body and soul. Furthermore, that he was so filled with wisdom before he was even 12 years old, is testimony to his divine nature and witness to the action of God's grace, which is that which fills any of us with wisdom. He also says, because the Son of God so emptied himself to assume our humanity that he was filled with grace. And finally, at the ending of the account of the finding of the temple, we read, Jesus advanced in wisdom, age, and favor before God and man. And so how wonderful it is to contemplate the marvelous condescension of God, that the one through whom all things were created, who himself knows no bounds, would limit himself within the body of a small child and a young boy, and that he who knows all things would in the created humanity he assumed for our salvation be willing to grow in wisdom. We could contemplate this wondrous mercy of God in that incarnation, that God emptied himself for our sakes. But perhaps we don't simply 
stop there that he emptied himself for our sakes, but remember that passage of St. Paul writing to the Galatians, faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself up for me. It may be too easy at times to think, well, God emptied himself for our sakes, for all humanity. How about he emptied himself for me and he gave himself up for me? And what love does that draw out from me? Because he emptied himself, he was filled with divine grace and wisdom. Do I believe that in emptying myself in the service of others, particularly that service that God is calling me to, and I know that, but it's very difficult or I don't want to do it, do I believe that if I do that, God will fill me far more richly than I can imagine? Do we wish to imitate the Son of God who emptied himself out of love for his Father's will and to take the risk to do the same? We could also note the genuine humanity of the Savior in as much as being a young adolescent boy he didn't even think to tell his parents that he was going to stay behind in Jerusalem. Now, for those of you who are blessed to be parents, of, particularly of adolescents, and perhaps particularly of adolescent boys who tend to be impulsive and oblivious to some obvious things, that too is perhaps worthy of contemplation as you find your way as parents to this particular child. And perhaps adolescent boys, you can have recourse to the Savior for sure help in remembering some things which ought to be obvious. Now these are the things that those repeated Hail Marys open us, invite us to contemplate in the mystery of the finding of the child Jesus in the temple. The second is Mary and Joseph seeking their, their son with, with anxious care and with sorrow Son, why have you done this to us? Origen says, well, really, they could not have worried because the angels had told both Joseph and Mary of the unique value of this child, and Simeon had prophesied about him. But I think they were worried because they had a great responsibility. And each parent has a great responsibility. And do you not, as parents, always feel that and worry about your children. And so we turn with that mystery as we continue the Hail Marys of that fifth joyful mystery to join in with Joseph and Mary and their anxious seeking, but also ask ourselves, why do we worry? Why do we worry? To remind ourselves that God loves our child believing, unbelievingly almost, even more than we do, and to continue to entrust our children to God's providential care, that ultimately God must protect them because, as we know so well, we can't. And so in those times of anxiety for our children, whether they be adolescent, whether they be adult, to give that over to the Lord and to his blessed mother and to their love and constant protection, because you know that from the first moment your child walked out of your sight, you knew you were not able to be there to offer the protection and care, and yet they're never out of the sight of the Lord. One third thing, perhaps, too. Jesus asks his parents, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And yet at the end of the, the story of the finding of the temple, the gospel tells us he went down with them, came to Nazareth, and was obedient to them. Jesus is in the temple because he needed to be about his father's business. As we pray the Hail Marys of that fifth joyful mystery, do we need to have our minds raised up to contemplate, are we busy about our father's business? Are our priorities in the right order? Are we doing what God is asking me to do at this time in my life? Am I busy about my Father's business? The Lord Jesus Christ was always busy about his Father's business from all eternity. 
He was busy about his father's business all through his incarnation. And he invites us to be busy about his father's business too. So that's my point on this is the mysteries and the Hail Marys are to bring us and open us to think about what does that mystery mean for me in the concrete reality of my life and my service of God. And to then open ourselves to that inspiration and with that to ponder these, with Mary, to ponder these things in our heart so that we too can be filled with God's grace and be obedient to his will.